Friends, during the time I was growing up, we didn't have any video games. If I wanted an adventure, well, I had to go out in the woods and make my own. I usually chose to hunt down bears and stuff like that. And I needed a good knife, like this old timer here, in order to do so. So today, we're going to check out some more old timer knives. And we started this out with the first video with the sharp finger here I got at the pawn shop. And then we came out with the 18OT, and after that, the 33OT, notice I didn't get the name wrong this time, that was a knife from hell. And then we compared it to the Case Peanut, and we compared the 33OT to the Case Centerjack Swell. But I got this large Case Stockman, and I don't have an old timer that matches up to that knife. So I went on um, Amazon, and I looked up, and I saw this 8 OTB. Let's make sure we get that name right here. So that is 8 Old Timer and Bone because it's an old timer and it's supposed to have genuine bone handles. They actually call this the Senior 8. And this thing says it's got stainless steel blades, it's got a 3 inch clip point blade, 2.2 inch sheets foot, and a 2.1 inch spay. Alright, genuine saw cut bone handles. Senior-80T, don't say anywhere on here where it's made, but we're going to go ahead and do an unboxing of this knife and check it out. But before we do, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel, like my video, and share it to any of your friends that might like similar content. Thank you. Alright, so looking at this knife, you know, I got off of Amazon, it looks like... Uh, might have been open before I got it. Now the boxes, I'm used to them getting smashed from Amazon the way they deliver it, but I think somebody got into this one. So let's see what we got here. I really don't like the packaging. I would have preferred the small box like the other ones came in. Yeah, I could have saved some money here because I really don't need this junk. Or whatever this. Yeah, get rid of that. And I hate this big old plastic thing here. Yeah, that's just landfill material. And like I really need these things to keep me from cutting myself. Alright, so let's get up and personal here. So this has what they call genuine bone saw cut handles. I like the color. It's not a bad looking knife. It's nice and smooth on the back here. I don't see any any gaps in the back spacers, but I do hear where the bone meets the bolster. Can you see the black lines? Yes, yeah, so there's a little bit of a gap right there. And that little groove in the bolster does a good job of hiding the fact that the bone doesn't um, it's not perfectly transferred into the bolster. So you can feel it if you look for it. Ends look nice and clean. Yeah, it's got nice traction there. But this here is sharp. They didn't chamfer it at all. It's just a, a square angle. And I think that's going to chip easy if I drop it or, or wear it against something. They should have rounded that. I don't know why they didn't. All right, let's check out the blades. So this has... A beautiful looking clip point blade. I really like it. And it has a, uh, a really nice nail nick. You know, it's got some kind of file work. I know, I know it wasn't created with a file, but I'm just going to call it that because I don't know what else to call it. And it looks like this knife is a little sharper than the uh, 33OT. Here's the tank stamp. Old timer. 8 OTB right there on that side. Nice and clean, stamped real well. And the blade's got a nice polish to it. Let's see what's on the other side. It's kind of small, hard to read. There you go, 8 OTB. So they're proud of that name, 8 OTB. So, well, they know somebody like me is going to miscall it. All right, here's the sheet's foot. It's got nothing on the tang. It's got that nice nail nick on that one side. 
See, nothing on either side on there on that tang. That's good looking. All right, here's a spay. It's got the same nail neck right there, but this one's kind of stiff to open. You know, I'm starting to like these spay blades. I'm starting to use them for more and appreciate them more than I used to. My Panama Trapper's got a beautiful spay blade on it. Check out that video. It's just a really nice blade. All right, so like I said, this one here is a little stiff. We're going to have to lube that up here in a minute. All right, let's take a look here. Here is our shield, nice old timer shield, and it's nice and smooth. They did a good job on that, and it looks good. It's it's an attractive. I think you can see the nail nick there a little bit better too. All right, the only pin is that center pin, but I really don't like how sharp these edges of the bone are. Why they didn't round that, I do not know. That's no bueno, right? I guess we could take a little emery cloth and chamfer them over a little bit and make them a little bit easier. Uh, also, we need to go ahead and get a little lube on this blade and see if we can free up that that one spay blade there. But we'll go ahead and put some on all three blades. And the spay blade. It is twice as stiff as those other two. Let's get a little extra in here. Work that a little bit. But it's going to take probably a little bit more than oil. We're going to have to work that for a while. These other two blades, sheep's foot here, it's not bad at all. This clip point, even though we'll go ahead and put a little bit more oil on there, it's not bad at all. It actually feels pretty good. It's almost perfect. All right, let's go ahead and put a little bit on the covers and the bolster. The back springs there and just kind of smear it all around, get it all on there. And should we put our cap back on? We'll take a rag and wipe the excess off. And let's go ahead and compare this knife. Best knife to compare it is the case large stockman here the stock the case stockman's a little bit larger not much about a quarter inch in length spay blades on the um, case is an inch and seven eighths and on the eight otb is an inch and five eighths let's go ahead and take a look at the clip point the clip point on the old timers two and a half and on the case large stockman is two and three quarter you can see that case has got a, a little bit more belly to it. The case overall is just going to be a better knife. It's, it's almost three times the price of that old timer. It's American made versus the most likely Chinese made old timer. But you know what? The sheep's foot, even though I like the sheep foot on the case better because I think it's just a better looking, deeper design, both of those are 1 and 13 sixteenths of cutting edge. They don't look it, but they're the same. All right, so let's go ahead and put this one away. And oh, check that. That back spring is sticking out. There's a definitely sharp edge there. I didn't feel that before. Sometimes they do that on particular blades if it's not fitted properly. Yeah, it's definitely got a sharp edge right there. All right, let's let's see what it looks like with the other blades open. No, nope. clip points, nice and smooth. All right, let's check it out with that hard to open spay. That might be bad. Man, I think it's still stiff. No, nice and smooth on the spay. It's just that sheep's foot. So, another knock on the quality there. Yeah. So you got hot spots on the back and you got hot spots on the corners of the bone handle. So two minuses there, old timer. Alright, so let's move on to the sharpness test. Get us a fresh piece of paper. Start out with the clip point. 
you remember, our 33 OT failed this horribly. This one already is starting to be better. That clip point, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better than that 33 OT came out of the box. All right, which one are we going to do next? Sheep's foot. All right, let's break out the sheep's foot. Oh. No. Yeah. That's almost as bad as that 33 OT was. Might as well just have a drywall trowel instead of a knife, huh? All right. Is it going to be two out of three or one out of three? Let's check out the spay. Is the spay going to flunk it? No? The spay blade actually cuts. Not perfect, but it'll cut. A spot right in the middle there, I can feel. So let's go ahead and break out the leather strop, move this stuff out of the way. And just put it on there real quick and see if that doesn't change things around. Now I'm going to go ahead and speed this up eight times. Because I know you don't want to sit here for the next 20 minutes and watch me strop the knife. But let's go ahead and work through all three of these blades. Work that edge like I showed you in the last video. Alright. That compound off of there. It stays a little different at the tip. Alright, fresh piece of paper. Let's see what she does. Alrighty. Spay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Definitely a lot smoother. Still got some issues. Right there in the center. Alright, so that one's got to see the stone, but you know what? I'm going to give it a pass because it did cut. Most of the blades cut and decent. So, alright, so that's one. Let's go ahead and do that sheep's foot. That's the one that was the worst. And that's the one I like the most, is the sheep's foot. You know what else? When I was stropping it, I could tell that it isn't a perfect straight sheet's foot. It's got a reverse curve in there. So I wasn't even hitting that center. See how that center don't want to cut? Because that center never did get stropped. I need to go ahead and reprofile that blade. Alright, clip point. Let's see if it does any better. Let's see here. Uh, yeah, let's get a let's get a fresh piece of paper. Give this thing a fair chance. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's no lightsaber, but definitely gets a pass. So two out of three blades pass. One failed horribly. Alright, so we got three knocks against you so far, old timer. Alright, I don't know. I don't know. Alright, so I wanted to talk about this little guy here. This is a little bear. I brought him out. I, I carved this during my summer in North Carolina when I was about 10, 11, 12 years old. And we got a little kit out of hardwood. Now I got this piece of hardwood at Har Hobby Lobby. I don't know. It's probably just basswood or something. It's definitely not oak. But I think we can make two out of this. So let me put it on the bandsaw. All right. So it gave me two. And let me go ahead and make my own kit because I couldn't find any kits like I got when I was a kid. So basically, we're just going to trace this thing with a pencil onto this block. All right, and this is going to give us our two-dimensional shape here. You don't want to cut it too small. 
then you won't have any toes or ears or nose. So, and your feet need to be all level, so you want to keep the, the feet towards the bottom here. All right, but we're going to take this over the bandsaw, and we cut it out like that. This is exactly what I used to buy as a kid when I was a kid up at those Indian gift shops. All right, it was made out of some really hard wood, a lot harder wood than this. But I would start with my little knife, my little shred or case, three-bladed knife, and I just started carving. All right, and the first thing you did was you started working on the legs because. And that's why the sheep's foot was so important, because the sheep's foot is what gets in there and gives you access. You can't have a rounded tip. You need that straight blade, because you got to get in there and do that detail work. So, you got to have a good sheep's foot. But anyway, that's for my review. Knife's got some marks against it. It's definitely not the knife I had when I was a kid or what I remember I had when I was a kid. I remember those things were super sharp and easy to sharpen. So, you know, old timer, I, I want to buy your knives. I want to continue. I want you to be what you were when I was a kid. I know you're trying. I know you got some American made knives, but they're kind of expensive and I can buy other knives for the same price. So you need to get back, find your niche, get your profits right, get your price where it needs to be. And bring back the American Workman knife that you are known to make. Alright friends, thanks for watching the video. Please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends.